the presence of God that is in this house right now, you can sense purity and holiness and righteousness. It's a beautiful presence right now. Hallelujah. There's a purpose for that. Because he wants to talk today about the dwelling place. Whew. The dwelling place. If I can make it. <laughs> Ooh, chihuahua. It's called a dwelling place. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> As he said, he's given the invitation out. People just don't want to accept the invitation of his dwelling place. The essential place. You know, God came to bring his presence and an invitation, an open door to dwell with him in the dwelling place. It's also called the secret place. It's the third chamber of the tabernacle. We've talked about it many times. But there's something emphasized today in this moment and what's going on right now globally about the dwelling place. Because it should be your desire and my desire. If you are a Christian, you should want God's presence more than anything else in your life, or you are not a Christian. Does everybody get it? God's presence should be the most important thing in your life, or you're lost. Does everybody understand? Good. Psalm 15. Oh, hallelujah. Because without God's presence, you will always be misdirected. Does everybody understand that? Without God's presence, you will always be misdirected. You'll be misled. You'll be easily deceived. Easily provoked, easily offended. In Psalm 15, hallelujah. Let's go there and let's speak it. Is everybody there? Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? That's the dwelling place. And, and these are the qualifications of dwelling in the place of a secret place. He's, this is the qualification right here because he brings the question, who may abide in your tabernacle in the holy place, in that dwelling? And he says, he who what? Walks up rightly. The dwelling place qualifications, walk up rightly. Who works righteousness, who speaks the truth in his heart, who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. Now, a reproach is associated with bring shame, disgrace, blame, or criticism. And whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord and who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved because he is dwelling in the presence of the Lord God Almighty, the creator of all things. He will not be moved. The dwelling place qualifications is to walk uprightly. Who practices righteousness? Come on, write them down. These are qualifications. You want to check yourself out. You walk uprightly. You practice righteousness. Your heart is in, in a constant self-examination of honesty. It's called the realm of truth. So you're, you're always checking yourself, your heart. Am I being honest? Am I being honest? 
Am I being honest? Person who has control over their tongue. Remember, it's your tongue that contaminates your own spirit. Who does not promote or reacts with evil. does not promote nor reacts with evil. Nor does he bring shame or disgrace or blame or criticism to a friend. Bring shame, disgrace, or blame or criticism. These are qualifications for the dwelling place. Despises evil. In other words, you and I are to hate evil, not pet it, not compromise it. We're to despise it. We're to hate it. We're to hate anything that promotes evil or approves evil. Respects those who fear the Lord. Respects those who fear the Lord because they reverence and honor God. They are lovers of his presence. And does not disrespect or alter the character of Christ. I'm going to say that again. Does not disrespect or alter the character of Christ because of a hurt, offense, or disapproval. You don't change no matter what's going on around you. does not disrespect or alter the character of Christ because of offense, hurt, or disapproval. Does not use money to gain favor or take advantage of someone. Does not use money to gain favor or take advantage of someone. The dwelling place qualifications. And those that practice the righteous qualifications that are consistent, they will not be moved because they have been qualified as a maintained position in the dwelling place with God. Any work of the flesh will remove you instantly. Boom. You're out of there. The dwelling place. Psalm 91. Is everybody okay? There's going to be a lot of disappointed people when they try and get into heaven. And the Lord says, I never knew you. Why? Because you practice lawlessness, which is unrighteousness. Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say, I will confess that he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and in him I will trust. These are dwellers of the secret place. They have a constant reality that God is their refuge and fortress. 
He is their only way. Total trust. In verse 9. See, we have the power to choose. And because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, our refuge, your refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, because you've made it a purpose that you will dwell with him. He says this, no evil will befall you. So why do people get taken out? Because they were removed out. You can blame the devil all you want, but we bring on what we bring on. Amen? Well, the devil made me do it. No, you got removed from the dwelling place because of your mouth, your attitude, or whatever it was. Because one of the things that happened was the qualifications are maintained there, got disqualified, and you were removed. That's what happens. We get removed from it. Same thing with Lucifer. Lucifer was removed from the dwelling place with God. Amen? It says, no evil will befall you, no plague or any uh, will come near your dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways, and their hands are going to bear you up. Lest you dash your foot against the stone. You will tread, you will have authority and dominion upon the lion and the cobra, cobra and the young lion and, and serpent. And you're going to trample, you're going to overcome. Because if God is with you, who can be against you? You know, people quote that scripture, God is with you, and that means you're a dweller. If you're not dwelling there, then how can God be with you? Now, the word says he never forsakes you. He's always looking, but he's waiting for you to get back into the dwelling place all the time. He says, because you've set his love, because you've cho chose to love him, you've set your love upon him, therefore he said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to deliver you. See, because if you love his presence, you're a dweller. You want to dwell there. He'll deliver you. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. He said, I'm going to set them on high because they know my name. See, many people use the name of Jesus but don't even know him. He said that when you call upon me, I'm going to answer you. I'll deliver you and I'll honor you. Can you imagine God saying, I'm going to honor you? But he will. And with long life, how many of you want to live long? He said, he will satisfy you. That means that he's your fulfillment, nothing else. He's your fulfillment. And if something else becomes your fulfillment, it is an idol. And it will remove you instantly out of the dwelling. With long life, I will satisfy him and I will show him my salvation. That is so powerful. Dwellers in the secret place have a constant reality that he is his re their God, God is their refuge. And because they choose to press in and dwell, he may, you make, we make the choice to press in and dwell. There's benefits of protection and direction. They are constant for me and you. Constant. No evil, no plague. Angels guide us with authority. And because we express his love, we, listen, because we love him, not just your need for him, because you love him. See, many approach God because they need him. I'm not saying we don't. We do. But there's an area where we go beyond the need now. We love him. You're in love with him. <laughs> that love affair is called intimacy. And it can only be done in the presence of God. You can read the word all you want and love the word all you want, but there's a difference in loving God's presence and just what you hear. And he says he'll deliver us, he'll answer us, he'll answer our request with long life, he'll fulfill our mission. Many go home before time because they're not dwellers. Many, they don't get to fulfill the full mission. In Psalm 92, in verse 12.
flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. That means that's where they say, he says, forsake not to assemble. But it's also associated with a dwelling in God's secret place, that dwelling place. I mean, you can come to church every single day and still not be a dweller. Coming to church doesn't make you a dweller. Loving God's presence makes you a dweller. And qualifying of fulfilling the qualifications of the dwelling place makes you a dweller. Amen? Amen. Oh, happy days. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be what? Fresh and flourishing. To declare that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Dwellers are called righteousness. They will grow in revelation knowledge. They will gather with worshipers. They will flourish. They will expand in the courts of God by earned trust. They will be granted more wisdom. They will bear fruit as the youth, as young when they are old. They have access to the fresh presence of God to declare his righteousness, goodness, and justice. And they maintain a reality that we can do nothing without him because his love is pure. There's a desire to live a pure life. Pure. If there's not a desire to live a pure life, there's no dwelling. And there's also no fear or reverence to the Lord. In Psalm 1. Is everybody okay? The dwelling place. So when the flood of the enemy comes and he attacks and all kinds of other things, people react, freak out, and do all kinds of goofy things. But you know it will bounce right off of you if you're in the dwelling. It will not affect you. Welcome to the earth where stuff happens. Hello? And stuff will happen. There's no, there's a guarantee about it. The word says, when you fall into various trials, it doesn't say if you do. So how will you respond or react to those things? In Psalm 1, blessed, everyone say blessed. blessed. That means prosperous. Blessed is the man or woman who walks not in the counsel of the what? Godly. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Now, dwellers are called righteous. They will grow in revelation knowledge. Amen. They will be blessed and prosperous. They will have... Also, the word blessed is associated with prosperous and favored. When you are blessed, you're prosperous and favored. Why? Because you've earned it. They're dwellers because they reject ungodly counsel. They reject ungodly influence. How about ungodly thoughts? Yeah. They depart from evil. They protect their heart and their mind. That's what this psalm is all about. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the path of sinners. Well, hello. They reject ungodly counsel. They depart from evil. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. They protect their hearts and minds. And they guard their tongue. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, which is the truth. They seek. Now, this is vitally, vitally important. But he del they delight in the law of the Lord, and in the law they meditate day and night. In other words, they are constantly, they seek the mind of God in all things. When a person does not seek the mind of God in every decision and everything that's going on in their life, they're not dwellers. 
or they've been removed from it. To dwell there is to constantly seek the mind of the Lord. So they seek the mind of God in all things, and they drink from the river of life connected to the throne of God. Watch what happens. He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in the season whose leaf shall also not wither. And whatever he does, he will what? Prosper, because he's blessed. He's got prosperity. He's got favor. But he says this, the rebellious, the ungodly, the reactor, The ungodly are not so, but are like a chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment. That's called reward. They will miss it. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Shall perish. The dwelling place. It should be a desire for every believer. Psalm 16. And a lot of people are going to be moved. It's called the falling away. We're in it. But even in this time of chaos and falling away, revival comes. Amen. God's always bringing revival. But you can't, listen, revive means to revive Refresh, reconnect, reunite. That's what revival is. God is calling people back, but many people are still rejecting the invitation. Psalm 16, verse 7. I will do what? I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I will what? Set the Lord always before. Can you set the Lord before you if you're not dwelling there? No. You can say all the words you want. But, but if you really set the Lord before you, you don't do the things you do. Amen? If the Lord is truly set before us, we won't do the things according to the old man or according to the worldly ways. We won't associate with people with that either doesn't mean we don't love them but we don't fellowship with them because bad company corrupts good habits amen but they're my friends no they're actually your enemy in disguise because they'll turn on you at any time hmm. i will have set the lord always before me because he's at my right hand i shall not be moved i shall not be moved you can't be moved if you're a dweller in a dwelling place. Does everybody get that? You move yourself out. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave me in hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. For you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. So there's a place where you and I got to maintain an attitude of gratitude. With reality of relationship in the dwelling place. With a pure heart and clean hands. Because he is before us in all direction and decision. Maintaining his presence with joy and pleasures. Where? From above. From above. And John 15. Oh, happy days. Only in the dwelling place can you fulfill your vows. Because you don't have strength to do them anywhere else. Things that you've committed, things that you've promised, and things that you told the Lord you were going to do. If you do this, Lord, I'll do that. It doesn't work that way. The Lord says, if you do this, then I'll do that. <laughs> Where it says, after you've fulfilled 
What he's asked you to do, he releases the promise. Amen. Psalm 15, verse 1. John, I'm sorry. John 15. Hallelujah. I am the what? True vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit in me, take, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that he may bear more fruit. I hear a lot of excuses. Well, I must be being pruned. No, you just got thrown out of the dwelling place. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. What's he say? Abide, abide, abide. Where? In the dwelling place. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it what? Abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. There it is. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. That's the fruit of the Spirit, okay? Just in case you're wondering. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out. I told you. They get disqualified. <laughs> out. Everybody out of the pool. <laughs> he is cast out as a branch and is withered. Why is he withered? Because he can't drink no more. They gather them and throw them in the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done. And by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. What a qualification. Now, you got to go back to the qualifications of abiding in the dwelling place. That's what qualifies me and you to be a disciple. Think about that. Dwellers abide, they are connected. In Philippians 3. The word says that the path of righteousness is narrow and difficult. I believe God is squeezing us more until we turn into his image. Verse 17, Philippians 3, 17. Is everybody okay? Again, I believe that there's a lot of things about to happen and we're going to need to be dwelling. Verse 17, let's speak it. Brethren, join in my following and following in my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on what? Earth. Earthly things. Remember, we're to be seeking the mind of God in everything. Everything. For our citizenship is where? In heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the work and by which he is able to even some do all things to himself. See, our body will eventually be conformed to his glorious body because this is not our home. See, the more you dwell in that place, the more you realize this ain't your home. The more you become pure, the more you realize that the world is contaminated, the more you realize you actually hate this place. And let's just be real. This place sucks. Hello? And we want out of here. But we want to bring as many home as we can. Because this place is going to cook one day. Amen? Amen? But in the meantime, and when Jesus returns and we return with him, we'll have a glorified body. But this earth will be totally different because it won't be ruled by evil. 
and then we have a thousand year reign, and then it's history, and everything is history, and then God will recreate a brand new place, and we'll be with him. Oh, snap. Everyone say, this is not my home. 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> See, eternal life actually is a representation that you're going to outlive the earth and the universe. We can't even comprehend that. You can outlive everything that God's created because you're with God. Can't be naughty. <laughs> or you don't get the gift. <laughs> First Corinthians thirteen eleven. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. When I was a child, I did what? I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. Did you ever see how a child reacts? Snap. <laughs> they can get really crazy. I know, you know, temper tantrums in the stores, you know, all kinds of stuff. Everything is, I want, I want, I want. If it's not my way, that's it. You know? And they don't understand what you're saying. No matter what you're trying to tell them. They just don't get it. So you got to, like, use a little violence. <laughs> I said a little. And when something stings, they go, I got it. <laughs> Don't touch the hot burner. Got it. But then they always re-challenge it. Does it really burn? <laughs> then they go back. Ah! Got it. <laughs> this is how a child thinks, though. Until they finally get older and they go, get away from that burner. Don't even, don't even attempt it. But as a child, a child challenges everything. Amen. Amen? They challenge everything. They walk in the street, they, whatever. They expect everything to move around them. Because they don't sense everything else besides themselves. It's too many adults that are the same way. Oh, happy days. So, that's what he's talking about. <laughs> Verse 12. He said, I put away the childish things or the childish thinking. Amen? For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide in faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is what? Love, because that's God's presence. Thoughts of a child, not a dweller. Uh, listen, when you become a dweller, those thoughts of childish, the way of reacting, is gone. Amen? Most important reality in dwelling in the dwelling place is to seek the mind of God in everything. Everything. Without seeking the mind of God in it, you'll be removed from the dwelling place. Every decision, every choice, everything around you if it's not associated and paralleled with the mind of God, you'll be removed from the dwelling place. You must always constantly approve those things in how God thinks, not in how man thinks. That doesn't mean we won't make a mistake. Amen? But you repent quickly so you can stay there. Because without repentance, out. Pro, uh, Proverbs 23. Oh, yes. Proverbs 23. 
verse 6. Proverbs 23, verse 6. The dwelling place. Hallelujah. Do not what? Eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his what? Delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Everyone say, for as I think, as I think. So, I so I am. So why do you think the enemy wants to mess with your thinking? And that's why God is requiring me and you to seek the mind of God in everything. Amen? For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. He eats and drinks, he says to you, but, this, but his heart is not what? With you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. As we think, so we are. To abide and dwell without seeking the mind of God is useless to maintain position. And here's another thing, maintain identity. Dwelling, if you're an individual that's in the dwelling place, you will maintain identity. When you're not a dweller, you lose my identity. You become what you're doing instead of you become, instead of maintaining who you are. Does everybody get it? So what you'll do is you'll fall more into the field of what you're doing. And you'll, you'll look at yourself more as a, an employee or whatever you're doing as an, a talent instead of as a child of the offspring of God Almighty. Hallelujah. As we think, so we are, we are abide. So by abiding in, in this dwelling place, uh, we maintain identity and we have victory in battles. We must not only carry the presence of God, but we must carry the mind of God in everything that we do. Romans 12. Hallelujah. Romans 12, the dwelling place. Verses 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or responsibility. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your thoughts, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renewing of our thoughts to align with the mind of God through his word and through his voice. In Romans 8, through his word and through his voice. That's why you get filled and with the Holy Spirit and you begin to learn the voice of God. Romans 8, 18. And I'm going to tell you, you will be challenged in multiple ways. Let's speak it. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. In us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Hello. All of God's creation is waiting for me and you to change. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Verse 21. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Why is it a bondage of corruption? Because it's ruled by Satan's kingdom. But one day it's going to be removed. Shortly. For we know that 
The whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our what? Our body. We, you look at, there's a groaning in you. Sometimes you don't even know why you're groaning. There's a grieving in you because you want to be fully clothed from home. See, you're, you can access the dwelling place but your physical body can't. Your spirit does. Your thoughts do. Your mind does. But your body can't. So as you, your new creation man enters the holy place, the old man is sitting outside. Just give him a sucker or something, you know? <laughs> here, wait here. Because he can't enter in. Some people try to drag him in, but he can't. And then some people stay out there because the old man is out there. But you can't bring him into the whole, that, that holy place. That's why it's called the holy place. It's the dwelling place and the glory and the presence of God Almighty. Only your spirit, your mind. And what brings you in there is how you think. Worship and praise. That's why we got to go through worship and praise to, Nullify our old man. Amen? So we can get in. But if you're not one that's a praise and worshiper, you're going to never get in a dwelling place. You'll hang outside with a six-pack of suckers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 24. For we are saved in this hope but hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Whoa. That means you're going to have to press in and claim. Hmm. We're going to have to press in no matter what. You press in. Galatians 5. You know, as people get older, they get to a point where they know that their mission is completed. And they want to go home. They want to go. Why? Because they know within them. And it doesn't mean even by age. It could be anyone. That there's a point in their life that they've done what they're supposed to do and it's time to go home. But thank God that they want to go home. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there are days when I want to go home, but it isn't because I fulfilled my mission yet. <laughs> Just get tired of the crap around me. Amen. Hallelujah. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Galatians 5.16, that says that there's a day to live and a day to die, right? But actually what's really happening, let me tell you something really powerful. What really happens, the reason why some people don't even realize it. You know, why do people commit suicide? Think about this. Most of the time they think that they get a, a, a they're, they're trying to remove themselves from what's happening and hope that they're going to enter a better place. Unfortunately, most of them go to hell. But only God has the last say. Amen. So in that, when a person is ready to depart, it's because they're ready for a new beginning. Amen. You know? <laughs> See, we were born again here for a new beginning. Then there's another born again. Amen. <laughs> That's an eternal be, A new beginning for eternity. Yes, we've started it here now, but we still got to put up with all the garbage around us, especially ourselves, the old man. We got to sleep with that thing and everything. Oh, we wake up with it, it faces you every single morning. You look in the mirror and go, oh my God. <laughs> and, and you start your day and you go on and you realize all of this 
we're pressed in, we're hard, all of these things that are happening. Yes, there's an area of enjoying life, praise God. God gave us life here to enjoy. But then there's a time to leave it. And never allow the joyness of this life to supersede the dwelling place of God. That's when it becomes enjoyment of life, an idol. Amen? <laughs> Galatians 5, verse 16. New beginning, praise God. I say then what? Walk. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so you do not do the things that you wish or you desire. But if you are led by the Spirit of God, you are not under the law. Dwellers are always filled with the Spirit. You cannot be filled with the Spirit without being a dweller. Amen? In fact, God baptizes an individual with the Holy Spirit so they become a dweller. So the first baptism of the Holy Spirit is to be, cause you to become a dweller so that you have power over everything. But if you're not a dweller, you don't have power then. You can speak in tongues and manifest the gifts and still go to hell. The gifts don't get you into heaven. They're just tools to assist you to overcome. Does everybody get it? So a person could be still praying in tongues and headed to hell. That's what the Lord said. Remember how many people approached him? Lord, Lord, hey, what's happening? I'm dying. I need in. I'm dead. I need in, Lord. Come on, you know. I'm the one that cast out devils, laid hands on the sick. I fed the people, did a lot of miracles. You were really cool. I need in. He says, I don't know you. What do you mean you don't know me? You practice lawlessness. Just because you use my tools doesn't make you righteous. Mm. You are not a dweller. And let's close at Colossians 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible warns us those who use drugs, alcohol, and all kinds of other things will not enter the kingdom of God. Those that are adulterers and fornicators will not enter the kingdom of God. He warns us. Because they're not dwellers. They're dwelling in the presence of evil, not dwelling in the glory of God. Verse 1, if then you were what? Raised with him, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God and do what? Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Hallelujah. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him. In glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do so. But above all things, put on what? Love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule your hearts, which you also were called in one body, and be what? Thankful. And let the word of God do what? 
dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another, in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts and to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. So, Lord, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word today. We want to be dwellers. We want to live in the dwelling place where you are. So we ask that you continue to draw us in there as we repent for anything that would interfere or throw us out of there. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound as we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.